Amen. Welcome to Church on the Beach. Yeah. 
to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord.
give life You are love You bring light To the darkness You give hope You restore Every heart That is broken Great are you, Lord It's your breath
the Legacy Church in Alvin, Texas. And God pointed her out, and she was about to turn 27. Last week, the Lord had us deal briefly with the 27 Club, and, and she was on her way to hell. She was about to turn 27, had cancer, and if she had not come to Jesus, I don't, she wouldn't be alive today. But she accepted Jesus. God delivered her from demons, filled her with the mighty Holy Spirit and fire, speaking with other tongues, downloaded her assignment book. The word of the Lord came. I mean, that's a lot to happen in one meeting. You've never seen somebody before. And part of the word of the Lord was that there was the call to, to preach the gospel that you would be like. That, that, that didn't mean that you would be that person, but like um, Maria Woodward Edder, who was a powerful woman apostle. God said you would be like, but different, but greater. He also pointed out another woman apostle. Both of them are in heaven. said you would be like an Amy Simple McPherson. The whole full gospel denomination still going today came out of that woman apostle's anointing. You would be like an Amy Simple MacPherson, but different, but greater. You would say, well, that's power. Well, yeah, it was, but it's the word of the Lord. Well, later, my son, my oldest son, Justin, and her get, got to get the Lord put them together, and they're married. So we gained a, a daughter in the, another daughter in the family. And so I want you to go ahead and start coming up. I, I'm using this mic so I don't have, mess with your adjustment on that mic and today I'm asking that the full apostle apostolic anointing drop in you today with signs wonders and miracles amen praise the Lord Samantha Goodman good morning how is everyone well, I'm here today to to just go over my testimony and what led me to where I'm at today. As Pastor said, I was on my way to hell. I was 26 years old. I had cancer. I was in a very dark place in my life. Um, and that day changed my life forever. Uh, I decided to give my life to God and just go with what he has for me. Jeremiah 29 11 says God has a plan for your life and it is for purpose. Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to go ahead and go into a prayer if y'all will bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father we gather today to seek your wisdom and comfort. Open our hearts to your word and grant us understanding. Help us to feel your presence and embrace your love even when life seems difficult. We proceed with our gathering we dedicate this time to you, asking that your name be glorified in all that we do. May our efforts bear fruit for your kingdom and bring honor to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. As I'm standing here today, I was questioning if I talk about this or not. Um, there was a time where I didn't feel like God loved me. And it's very deep and personal. Many of us, at some point in our lives, have felt distant from God. Yes, yes, questioning His love and presence in our lives. Yes. And let me tell you, that feeling can be very isolating and painful. Yes. Life can be incredibly challenging as we face trials, losses, disappointments, and hardships. If you feel in love by God, it is important to remember three key truths. Number one, God's love is constant and unchanging. Our feelings can be deceptive. They fluctuate with our circumstances, health, and mindset. God's love, however, is steadfast and eternal. Yes. In Romans 8, 38 through 39, Paul assures us, for I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither present nor the future, 
nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Even when we do not feel his love, it remains ever present and unwavering. Number two, God understands our struggles. God is not distant from our pain and struggles. Jesus, who walked among us, experienced the full range of human emotions. Hebrews 4.15 tells us, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, but, as we, but just as we are, yet he did not sin. God understands our feelings of loneliness and doubt. He is with us in our suffering and invites us to bring our burdens to Him. Number three, seek God in prayer and scripture. I'm, I'm going to be honest here, if I can. I was not good at opening up my Bible, picking it up, and I carried so much on me. The weight of the world was just suffocating me. But it was God who gave me breath. Come on. Number three, seek God in prayer and scripture. When we feel disconnected from God's love, we must turn to him in prayer and immerse ourselves in his word. Psalms 34, 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, who saves those who are crushed in spirit. Through prayer, we can pour out our hearts to God, sharing our fears, doubts, and feelings of unworthiness. The scriptures remind us of his promises and truth of his love. This makes me think of a glow stick, right? In order for the glow stick sh to shine, what do you have to do to it? You have to break it. Meaning, just because you feel broken does not mean you are not valuable, and it does not mean you are incapable of shining. Some things have to be broken in order to be able to illuminate. That's good. That's good. God's love is the greatest force on earth, stronger than any storm and brighter than any darkness. I wrote this a long time ago, but God has put it on my heart to share with you all today. It's a poem that I wrote. It says, in the depths of despair, where darkness resides, a broken glow stick, its light is undenied. Cracks and fractures, yet it still beams, a testament to hope in the midst of shattered dreams. When life's trials bend us and we're torn apart, like the glow stick, we reveal our heart. Though broken, our spirit refuses to dim, for within us burns a light, radiant and trim. Through struggles and pain, our light may flicker, but in Christ our flame burns even thicker. For his grace sustains us in every hour, empowering us to rise and to shine with power. So let us embrace our brokenness with grace, knowing that in weakness his strength we embrace. For in the darkest night, his light shines bright, and through broken vessels, his glory takes flight. When we encounter suffering, we may sometimes feel abandoned or unloved. We might think, if God loves me, why am I going through this pain? Or why are things not as easy for me as it is for other people? There must be something wrong with me. It's important to recognize that hardship is just a part of the human experience. Even Jesus, God's own son, faced immense suffering. His crucifixion was the ultimate act of love, demonstrating that God's love does not exempt us from suffering, but walks with us through it. Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Think about it this way. You relax in a bus, but you don't know the driver. You relax on a plane, but you don't know the pilot. You relax on a ship when you don't know the captain. So why don't we relax in life knowing that God is in control? Come on, that's good. That's good. In quiet moments of reflection, I see the battles God has fought for me with unwavering clarity. When darkness threatened to engulf my spirit, he stood as my protector, turning despair into hope and guiding me through the valleys of my fears. In times of overwhelming odds, when I felt weakest, his strength became my shield, warding off the forces that sought to break me. 
Each trial, each struggle, and each storm I faced was met with his divine intervention. Often unseen, but undeniably powerful. God's love, relentless and fierce, fought for my peace, my joy, and my purpose, transforming my battles into victories and my scars into testimonies of his boundless grace and unyielding devotion. The battles I couldn't face alone, he fought on my behalf. Standing as my warrior and my refuge, when betrayal cut deep and loneliness wrapped its cold arms around me, his love surrounded me, healing wounds and mending a broken heart. The moments I thought would break me became the very moments that defined my faith. How many people here have heard or have even said, God gives his toughest battles to his strongest soldiers? I'll admit it, I've said it. I've heard it. For example, I asked God, why would you give me a drug addicted mother who didn't care about her kids? She only cared when and where she would get her next fix. She didn't care if I was there. She didn't care what I was going through. She cared about what she wanted. So I asked, why would you put me in this position? Why would you give me to somebody who didn't love me? But just as God brings people into your life, guess who else does? Satan himself. Ooh, that's good. Come on, preach. Right. In Matthew that's good. 7, 16, that's good. says, by their fruit, you will recognize them. But God does not give you battles. He's already fought them. And guess what? They've already been won. God's victories are not limited to physical battles. They encompass every aspect of our lives, spiritual, emotional, and relational. His triumph over sin and death through Jesus Christ is the ultimate victory that redefines our existence. In John 16, 33, Jesus comforts his disciples by saying, In his word, in his world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. His assurance is not just for the past or future battles, but for our present struggles as well. Consider the story of Job. He was a faithful servant of God, yet he lost everything, his wealth, his children, his health. Job questioned God and struggled to understand his suffering, but through it all, God was with him ultimately restoring him and blessing him more than before. Job's story shows us that God's love is not measured by the absence of hardship, but by his presence in our lives through. That's good. That's good preaching. Life is often marked by trials and tribulations that can lead us to question the nature of God's involvement in our struggles. It's not uncommon for people to blame God for the bad things that happen in our lives, wondering wondering why a loving God would allow such pain. However, the Bible teaches us a different perspective. God is not the source of our suffering. Rather, he is our divine warrior who fights on our behalf. And I've heard somebody say this before. They're waking up, getting ready for the gym, right? They say, God, why me? Why do you choose me to do this? But you're on your way to a gym that you signed up for the membership. Come on, that's good. We've thrust these battles with on, on ourselves, but instead of taking accountability, we find the easiest one to blame. Yes. Life will not be easy. There will be moments of profound difficulty, and yet in those moments, remember that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Yeah. His love is ever-present, offering comfort, strength, and hope. Let us hold on to His truth and support one another in love trusting that God is with us now and always. And that's what I have for now. Um, so I want to go into a closing prayer. Lord, as we conclude this time together, we thank you for your presence among us and for the blessings you have bestowed up upon us. During this gathering, we are grateful for the opportunity to connect, learn, and grow in your love and truth. Lord, we ask you that the lessons we've learned and the fellowship we've experienced stay with us as we go our separate ways. Help us to carry the spirit of this gathering into our daily lives, living out your teachings with sincerity and commitment. May your wisdom guide our decisions and may your love shape our interactions with others. We lift up to you all the needs and concerns that remain in our hearts. We pray for those who are struggling, asking for your comfort and healing. Strengthen those who are weak, 
provide for those in need, and grant peace to those who are anxious. As we leave this place, we seek your protection and guidance. Keep us safe and lead us on the path of righteousness. May your Holy Spirit continue to work within us, transforming our hearts and minds to reflect your character. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of this time together and for the work you are doing in each of our lives. We trust in your faithfulness and rely on your grace. As we go forth, may we be ambassadors of your love and truth, shining your light in the world. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise, now and forever. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Yeah. 